Link, he's come to save the day. He's come to save the Princess Zelda. <laughs> ah, just kidding. I am not doing that again. I did it last year or the year before when this when the original Switch came out, and it was not a pretty sight. This is a very exciting day because we have the release of the Nintendo Switch Lite Edition. Now, if you're not familiar with this, it's basically the console that came out two years ago, but it's smaller and cheaper. And it comes in this very unusual selection of colors, teal, dark gray or light gray, and yellow. Now, I'm overjoyed because I'm a big fan of teal, as you can see. I love the idea of a smaller Switch. Now, I've seen some pictures, and even just looking at the picture of this hand right here, you can see it's gonna be quite a bit smaller than the actual Nintendo Switch. Nintendo? Nintendo. Nintendo Switch. It's just a simpler package overall in that the Joy-Cons don't come off and you cannot plug it into your TV. So normally, if you want to plug into a TV like this, you need to grab the Nintendo Switch dock. If you buy this, the Nintendo Switch that I bought maybe two years ago, this is the original Nintendo Switch which costs like $300 and it goes into a docking station like this. And on the back, you've got HDMI, power, USB, and stuff like that. So you can play it on as large a screen as you like or as large a projector as you like, or very importantly, being able to stream on Twitch or YouTube. If you're a video game streamer, or you want to capture footage for making YouTube videos, so you're a creator in that sense, then you are definitely going to want to stick with this, the original Nintendo Switch that cost $300. However, this product is clearly aimed at a different audience. With Pokemon coming out in November, I'm pretty sure they thought this was the perfect time to release the Nintendo Switch Lite because it's going to be cheaper. And let's say you've got two kids and they both want to play Pokemon together because that's one of the best things about Pokemon is being able to trade with your friends and play Pokemon against your friends in battle. You're going to need two Switches. Now in all honesty, if your kids just want to play Pokemon or if you are a kid and you just want to play Pokemon one by one, then you could always just take turns on a single Switch, right? However, it's that ability to play at the same time, trade with each other and battle Pokemon together with you on your Switch and your brother or sister on their Switch. So let's jump straight in and unbox this Nintendo Switch Lite. So on the front of the box, you've got a picture of the console. It's teal blue, because that's the color I chose, but there's also yellow and there's light gray. On the back of the box, it's actually got a picture of the back of the Switch. And if I'm not mistaken, the kickstand... Okay, I don't see a kickstand, so maybe there's no kickstand on the Nintendo Switch Lite, but we'll find out after we open it in a moment. On the side of the box, just a picture of someone playing the console, and on the other side of the box, just showing how incredibly small this is actually going to be. It's not going to be a super mini console, but it's going to be about maybe the size of something like a PS Vita 2000. And on the inside, we've got instructions. Plug the AC adapter in. On the inside of the box, it looks like this. Let's pull it out, and if you hold it the correct way up, the switch won't fall out. Ah, we've got a piece of cardboard on the front that prevents it from falling over. Nothing on the inside of the box, so we can chuck that over there. This is the main event. I will look at all the details on the inside later. It reminds me of the PS Vita when I unboxed it. Oh yeah, that's so nice. And it is, in fact, quite a bit smaller than I was expecting. One of the big differences you can see between this and the original Switch is that instead of having four buttons over here and four buttons over here, you've now got the buttons and an actual D-pad. Now the reason they didn't have a D-pad before was so that you could play your multiplayer games. On the original Nintendo Switch, you had four buttons here and four buttons over here so that when you took it off to play in two-player mode, you had an analog stick and four buttons, and again on this side, an analog stick and four buttons. But because the controllers don't actually come off on this new edition, on this new edition rather, on the Nintendo Switch Lite, you can see that they've just gone for a standard D-pad and hopefully it will be good fun for playing Street Fighter, but I mean, I'm gonna be, I'm really looking forward to testing this out. One of my main disappointments is that the D-pad is not here because when I'm holding this console, I have to like balance it here on my palms and it's just not the most comfortable thing in the world. But we'll be testing all that in the future. In fact, the buttons feel a little bit different as well. The buttons have a slightly softer tactile feel to them. You've got the screen on the front, which is smaller than the original Nintendo Switch screen. And just for com size comparison, you can see it is actually significantly smaller than the original Switch screen, but not so much that you wouldn't be able to play it. Like it's still probably as big or bigger than the original, like the 3DS 
XLL when the XL version of the 3DS came out. It's about that big or a bit smaller. It's, it's a good size, and especially when you compare it to, I've been playing the PS Vita for a long time, and man, it's even a little bit bigger than that screen, plus hopefully it is still 720 HD. D-pad on the left side with the left analog stick, which does click inside. It does click like that. And you've got the action buttons over here, X, B, Y, A on these buttons here, and you've got the right analog stick, which also clicks. You've got the home button here on the front, so I'll be pressing that to wake it up from sleep mode and from getting out of games into the main menu. You've got the plus and minus buttons, which are to like start your game or to open up the options. Minus, that's for various different extra features. On the top of the console, we've got actually more or less the same inputs that we've got, inputs and buttons, as we've got on the original Switch. We've got the fan vent here in the middle. We've also got the headphone jack. Fortunately, you don't have to play with wireless headphones. Headphones. You can play with <laughs> normal headphones, which I love because I can use any of the expensive headphones I've accumulated over the years. Plus, you don't have to go digital only. It does have a game card slot, so when you want to go to your Amazon or wherever you can buy games that aren't straight through the digital only store, you can buy them and put them in here. And I don't know what game I've got in here right now. Pulling the game card out of my original Switch. Oh, I've got Super Mario Maker. If you get bored of this game or you want to lend it to someone else, you can take it straight out, pass it over to them, and they can slide it into their own Switch and Bob's your. So glad to see that there is the game card here. You don't want to have to be stuck with all digital yet. I think in the future, a lot of game consoles and systems will be all digital, but for now, loving the ability to sell games that you're done playing or hand them over to friends. All right, last but not least, on the top of the console, you've got your L and R buttons and your ZL and ZR buttons. Now they feel nice and clicky. And on here as well. But I think they feel a little bit softer. They're the same amount of click, but the original Switch was like, looser? It's got a bit of give before it clicks. You can feel like there's a few millimeters of give before it actually moves. On these, on this one, that's interesting. So it's actually a little bit more, I would say it feels more responsive on the Switch Lite. Hopefully they can start considering making it designed like this for the original Joy-Cons. But you know, it's not it's not a big deal. It makes abs it makes it makes no difference. I'm just nitpicking here. The other buttons on the top of the console are the power button here, and you've got the volume up and volume down. They are well, they're kind of easy to find, but I wish that the volume was not the same place as the power button. I have had issues before where I've been reaching for the volume button in the dark, and I've ended up pressing the whole thing off. And unfortunately, the design is exactly the same on the new Switch Lite. It's not the new Switch Lite, on the Nintendo Switch Lite. And on the base of the console, it looks like we have the same port, USB-C, but we do not get HDMI output. Now, in the original console, you could plug your Switch into the dock through there, and you can see there's a USB-C port at the bottom there. And at the back, HDMI would come out, so you could plug it into your TV. On the Nintendo Switch Lite, this is only for charging and whatever features that USB-C can do, but it does not have video output on the Nintendo Switch Lite. That is an important feature that they took out because it makes the whole unit cheaper and they can sell it to, you know, a lot of these people who just need a sub $200 unit, which is basically what this is. So you've got your left side and your right side speakers over here and your micro SD card slot. So if you do want to download games, or you've got features that require downloads. There are plenty of features that do require downloads. As long as it's fast enough for the Nintendo Switch, you can put a micro SD card in here, and download hundreds of gigabytes worth of games and put them in here. Now, I usually buy all my games digital, but more recently, I have been buying my games physical, mostly so that I can do things like what I just did, take it out and plug it into this switch here, or I could lend it to a friend or a family member who hasn't had a chance to play Mario Maker yet. I usually just think of them as portable licenses that you can, or transferable licenses that you can pass to other people. You can tell that the texture of the finish of the paint job on here is a little bit more matte and less shiny, even though it feels nice in my hands right now. How does it feel to actually play? And I'm gonna be honest, already I don't like, I don't like that the D-pad is right here. Before it was resting in my palm and I had to bend my hand over like this to play, like look, it's really natural for my right thumb, but for my left thumb I have to like bend my thumb like this, or just not 
balance it on my palm. And now with the Nintendo Switch Lite, it's even worse because now if it's resting on your palm, this is the angle that your thumb now has to bend down to. And even before turning it on, I'm still a bigger fan of the control scheme of the PS Vita, which does have some great fighting games on it, but it is a little bit, it's getting a bit long in the tooth. Let's go ahead and switch it on. Hold down the power button here. Nintendo. Notice they don't do the click anymore because you can't actually do the... I lied. <laughs> Alright, so we're into the new Nintendo, the new Nintendo Switch, the Nintendo Switch Lite, and we've updated the system, and I can probably link my account. But before I do that, why don't we open a new game? So this is a game that just came out on the same day as the Nintendo Switch Lite. I'm sure a lot of people bought it. It's called Zelda no Densetsu, it's The Legend of Zelda. This game actually came out on the Game Boy many, many, many years ago. A beautiful piece of box art. It's so nice to see manufacturers still thinking about box art. I mean, of course, this is an official Nintendo game, but great to see that they're thinking about the box art for this game, even though a lot of games, especially because they've gone digital only, they don't think too much about the inside box art. But this is what we've got. Zelda no Densetsu. Slide it in. And there it is. I'm so excited! Look at this opening! Of course, we didn't have this opening on the Game Boy. The screen looks really nice, super sharp. I guess it'll look actually sharper than the original Nintendo Switch because the original Nintendo Switch was running at 720p on a larger screen. I imagine this is running the same resolution but on a smaller screen. So we're gonna get, it's gonna look like sharper visuals even though we're getting the same technical amount of detail. <sighs> Link, he's come to save the day. Come to save the Princess Zelda! How about... Plink. Yeah, that's your name. Ah, oh, it's analog control! Except it's not, is it? <laughs> it's still digital. Even though it's using the analog stick, you're still <laughs> restricted to the eight directions. This is clearly a throwback to the original Game Boy game. What? How did I know your name? Well, I saw it on the back of this shield! Oh, wow, look at the depth of field effect, which gives us that real... What's the word? Tilt shift. It looks like tilt shift when everything looks like a toy. Whoa! Chill out. Sorry to keep comparing it to the PS Vita, but the PS Vita was running at I think something like 500p, so it was not as high resolution as this screen. So even though it was a comparable size, the PS Vita was never running at HD. Out of my way! Ouch! Oh, sick! I can actually push people out of the way with my shield. Yeah! Getting the Switch Lite, which is in this tiny little form factor. Look at it in the palm of my hand. So it looks like it's tiny in the palm of my hand, but it's definitely big enough for playing portable gaming. Again, I've been playing on my PS Vita with the same similar size screen for a long time. Press B to attack! Yo! Sucks to be you! Link! He's come to save the day! Yo! Listen, I just wanted to test this game very briefly, but as you can see, it's Gorgeous! The music is fantastic, completely orchestrated as well. I love that it's this intimate string quartet playing the music. Oh, it's gorgeous. I'm absolutely loving it. Let's jump in the hole! <laughs> Why not? <laughs> Alright, there you have it. That is the unboxing for the Nintendo Switch Lite, which came out in 2019. This is two years after the original Switch came out, which is still a fantastic console. And actually for people who want to make video games, uh, sorry, people who want to make videos for YouTube, or if you want to stream on Twitch or stream on YouTube, then this is still probably the better option because you can get HDMI output so that you can actually record footage from your Switch. Or if you're playing multiplayer, maybe you're buying this console for people who want to play games that are all done on a single console, then this still might be the better option because you can share it and play it and you can take the Joy-Cons, play two player or four player and it's nice and easy, plus it comes with those Joy-Cons. However, if the main goal for you is to play these little single player games or to play games like Pokemon coming out and you want to be able to battle each other at the same time, at the same time, at the same time, you're, you on your console and them on their console, then the Nintendo Switch Lite is probably the ideal option because it is cheaper by a significant amount. Now you can probably get good sales, you can probably find this for a nice discounted price, but it's still at retail, 
recommended retail price. This one is still roughly 300 or 330 dollars for like the console and maybe a bit more if you can get yourself a bundle. But the Nintendo Switch Lite, the recommended retail price I think is about $200, which is how much I paid for it. So it's quite a bit cheaper if you do need to buy two. For you and a friend, or maybe you're a parent and you're buying it for your kids, then you can get two of them for $400, rather than buying one of these for like $330. I hated, I really did not like, you can actually check out one of the previous videos. I looked at the colors and I was like, what? Those colors don't look right, but now that I've got it in person, it does look a bit different. It looks like a deeper teal than the teal that they were showing on the ads. It just looked, maybe because of the white background, it looked a bit too bright. I'm really happy with it so far. The screen is nice and sharp. It's very portable, and I don't know, I think it's even probably, it's probably a pocket test. It's pocketable. It's about the same size, to be honest, as a PS Vita 2000. Pretty much all the games that don't require you to like shake Joy-Cons should work on this, but I do believe you can just hook up normal Joy-Cons by Bluetooth syncing one of these red and blue Joy-Cons onto this unit here. Just remember that you do not have HDMI output. So if you're a streamer, you probably want to go for the more expensive unit, but if you just want to go on the train, and just play a bit of Zelda, or play a bit of Puyo Puyo, or play a bit of Tetris, or play a bit of Street Fighter, and have a D-pad built in without having to get the hoary D-pad Joy-Con, which where is mine? If you wanted a D-pad on the original Switch, you had to go and buy this. This is a Joy-Con that is sold by Hori. It's not an official, but it is licensed, a licensed product. You'd have to go and buy one of these. And so when I played fighting games, I would always take the original Joy-Con off and I would plug this one in. But it's built in to this one and it feels pretty good so far. I'm running out of time for this video, so I'll be doing a test in Street Fighter to see how much I like this D-pad. There's two things I want to be able to do. I want to be able to do, do dragon punches, fireballs, and I also want to be able to do 360 motions for characters like Zangief. Sorry if I was speaking quite quickly, but as you know, when I get quite excited about Nintendo products, I talk quite quickly. Oh, and last but not least, completely forgot, uh, there's also like a charger in the box, so don't forget if you want to charge the unit, you don't have to buy the charger separately. Hooray! Don't forget to comment, subscribe, share links and all that great stuff. And if you'd like to talk about gear and stuff like this, then you can join us on the Discord or you can follow me on Twitter. It's at Nihongo Gamer. That's all.